All right, 25. We're still missing a decent number of people. What's going on out there? How many people forgot to set their clock back? <laughs> yeah, that's funny. I mean, most everybody should have some kind of device that automatically sets itself, right? In fact, this time it was forward, so we lost an hour of sleep, which is always fantastic. Yay! It should just stop. It. Just stop. It. Um, California, we voted a while back to allow the state to do it to stop daylight savings time, and we just it just has to happen. They just have, we said do it. You can go ahead and do it, and they won't. And anyway, so. Uh, enough of that. As you guys come in, let me know if you have questions. All of the quizzes are now graded. Um, I had one that I just did because they couldn't follow instructions, but that's fine. All right. Any questions from the, the quiz? Somebody already turned in corrections. Kick ass. Oh, so questions from homework. Okay. So number, let me see where am I at? Come here. There you go. Yeah. All right. So one thing about 74. Okay. If you're viewing the book online, I have no idea when this happened. Um, I have to send them a little note. But this could help explain why people are getting this wrong. So if you're viewing this online, it says a spread of 52 weeks, but they say zero to two. That makes no sense. So it should be from one to 53. All right. All right, all right. Does that help? Uh, what else do you have? I mean, that's a little, there's a lot of parts here. So do you have a more specific question? I have about? one for part I. All right, part I, there you go. Okay, look at that, going right to it. I love it. All right, let me, let me make sure, let's do this first, because this is gonna impact us on part I. So now that you know it goes from one, to 53, they pretty much already told us what the height would be. What is the height gonna be for this? Anybody? One out of 53? No. How wide is it? 52. So it should be one over 52. So that the area comes out to be one. Right, that's related to all the probabilities adding up to one. Then a problem like this is gonna be real easy. You just draw it and find the area. Now, this is neat. What, what does that mean right there in part I? What does that symbol right here mean? Given. Given, I love it. What happens when you have a given? What changes? What's the main immediate thing that changes? We could do it, come on. Do I have to make one of these problems real quick? All right, guys, look. So four, seven, five, six, okay. So there's 11 people. So what's probability I get C, it would be four out of 11. Is that cool? What's probably I get C given A? So what's gonna change? C given A, what, what's gonna change down here? Just made this real quick. Given A, what does that mean changes? Why was this one out of 11? because it, it just said, what's the probability I get group C, right? 
So it would be four out of a total of 11 things that could have happened. Well, C given A, so how much stuff could happen now? Three out of five. Five, so the bottom becomes five and the top is out of those five. Okay, now, what does that have to do with shit, Jeff? What sets up the denominator in a uniform the height does? Wouldn't 52 be on the bottom? So now watch, this is neat. This is really kind of neat. Part I is the only time I'm going to redraw this picture because what does part I say? It can't be from 1 to 53 anymore. What am I given? In part I, what am I given? What do I know is true? 12 to 28. Go from 12 to 28. No, stop it. That's not what I'm given. That's not what I'm given. That's the question. What's the probability that it's greater than 12? Given that it is less than 28. So now it's got to go from 1 to 28. Let me stop for a minute. I know it's got to be from 1 to 28 now, given that it's less than 28. So if it's from 1 to 28, how tall is that going to be now? Went over 27. And then you draw in x. Does everybody see how this is not less than right? Is x greater than 12? You got to read it backwards. Why did they write it like that? I don't know. I'm sorry. But x greater than 12. So now you draw that in x greater than 12 and you find the area. So the one time you can redraw a uniform distribution is when I'm given more information that I know it doesn't go all the way from 1 to 53. It actually goes from 1 to 28. It tells me it's less than 28. That one's definitely one of the freakier problems in here. You could also use the formula if you want to. Probability of A given B, you could actually use the formula, but you know that kind of makes it more disgusting. I have a visual of the problem. So I could just do it that way instead. Is that okay? You guys okay out there? You guys okay with that? Yeah, it makes more sense. But for part J and part K, ah. is it part of part I or is it part of- No, okay. they're their own deal. Yeah. Okay. So they should have put part I at the end, but none of these build on each other. Yeah, part J and K are coming back to the original. Okay, anything else guys from the quiz or from homework? Did anybody notice that I put this up? Hold on, what, what this Jeff? I don't know, hold on. The uh, practice midterm. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Don't pay attention to all the other crap. You can't see that here. There we go. Practice midterm. Okay. Which means I'm going to maybe tomorrow I'll make a video going over the work for this. Look at that. Yummy. Look how long that is. That's yummy. That's gross. Oh, yeah. That's all that stuff. Uh, that's probably creepy when I do that. Look at yummy. Oh, yeah. I don't care. So it's there for you. Do you have to do the practice midterm? Hell no. You don't have to look at it at all, right? That's totally up to you. But I will have a solutions video for it. And it's just another way to study. Because when is the midterm happening? Wednesday. Holy shit. <laughs> yes, it is happening Wednesday. And how are we doing it that I told you since before the semester started? In class. In class. On Zoom. On Zoom. Put your camera on. <laughs> camera on. I like it. We're doing it live. We're doing it live. Does that still resonate? No? You guys know what I'm talking about? No. Okay. Um, yes. Yeah, so you will need to have your camera enabled on Wednesday for this. And you've known that since before the semester started. So hopefully you guys are ready for that because that's the way it's going to work. Okay. I'm not seeing anybody expressing any concerns. So you have a practice midterm up. I will put a, an answer key, a solution video for it, probably tomorrow. 
Wednesday, we can go over whatever questions you have um, right before the midterm starts. How many questions? I have no idea. It's not going to be. It's not going to be as long as this. Let me see. It's not going to. We stop. It's not going to quite be as long as this is. Right. Uh, but how many questions exactly? I don't know. I really don't know. Probably somewhere from twenty to twenty-five, counting A, B, C, D. Right. How much time would you have? Almost the entire time. I'm going to devote maybe the first 10 or 15 minutes, it depends, to questions. And then the rest of the time will be for the midterm. So you'll get the entire class time after we're done asking questions. Yeah, way cool. I think so. Way cool. So you must take it. So last semester, I had somebody take it who wasn't logged into Zoom. And that just doesn't fly. This is. The midterm and the final are not like the quizzes. They're taken in class. Uh, of course, you're allowed to make corrections. What's the only thing you're not allowed to make corrections to? Well, there's two things, really. What's the main thing you cannot make corrections to? Does anyone know? The final. The final. I like it. And corrections. You can't correct corrections. You can only correct things once. I like it. Is everybody with me? So you can completely correct the midterm and get some points back, possibly. If you need to, right? Don't don't uh, go into go into it thinking you get that hundred. Then you don't need to correct anything. Hell, I'm gonna put some bonus questions on there. You could actually get a hundred and six if you get all the problems right and the bonus right. And that's happened before. It's happened. A few times before. Anyway, anything else, guys? Any other questions? I was going to ask about the um, the K find the minimum for the upper quarter. Do I just split the fifty-two weeks into four quarters and find? Wait, 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 wait. Let me catch up to you. Where are we at? Uh, oh, the minimum for the upper quarter. So that's really just find the 75, 75th percentile. Go seventy-five percent of the way in. So you got to be careful when you're doing percentiles because you have to do the percentage of how long it is, the way we did before, how long the list was, the percentage of the width plus one because it starts at one, right? Okay, maybe. Anything else before we transition back into chapter six stuff? It's totally up to you. If you have any questions from homework. Okay, all right. You guys doing okay? I, I added something else. Let me, this might be a good time for me to tell you this. I added something else up here. I don't know if you've gotten any announcements or on email about this, but if you go to modules, come on. And you see where it says tutoring and other help options, right? So there's the extra office hours, there's the tutoring. The basic needs thing, I don't know if you guys looked at this, it's like, uh, emergency aid grants, help desk, all this kind of stuff. But I also just added mental health resources. So these are things that Grossmont offers. Um, so you click on that, it takes you to this page, the request a telemental health screening. Uh, this is all free stuff. They have some uh, suggestions on what to do for your mental health. So these are things that you have access to as a Grossmont student. And believe me, I'm not entirely joking when I make my little plea to you to turn on your camera if you can and all that kind of stuff. I mean, it affects faculty and students, right? Uh, being online, not being in the classroom, not being with people, trying to understand what's going on, technology, everything. And then you got family in the background, a lot of people, and you got, you know, it's, it really, really can get to you. So I understand. And there are free things available to gross one students. 
to help you if you are experiencing anything uh, that's causing you uh, mental anguish of any kind. So it's up there if you need to look at that. There should be no stigma about seeking help, right? You don't have to tell anybody if you just want to go get it, but there should be no stigma about seeking any mental help. We all need some of that. Okay. Anything else, guys? I'm just gonna I'm gonna go right into um, back into chapter six. I don't know if you guys noticed the theme of the day. I really put this on for my first class because they had a quiz and so many people just didn't show work. It was driving me insane. So I had to do this. My background and my shirt just had to. Anyway, sorry. Um, so let's get back into six then. What we're going to do. Oh, yes. What's up? Can we do a study group for the midterm? It's up to you guys, as always. Tuesday. I don't know if you guys are interested. I mean, it's always the usual like five <laughs> or six that show up. How about tonight? <laughs> or tonight, yeah. Now that we have that um, study guide that you sent. So if you, if somebody will email me right now, um, I can set up the Zoom session and send that out to everybody. Just somebody email me right now so I don't forget. I like it. And if, uh, if you're in the study session and you don't want me to stop in, you just send me an email and say, we don't need you, Jeff, don't stop in. Otherwise, I will stop in after I'm done teaching my last class. At what time is your last class? <laughs> it's over at like uh, somewhere between 6.30 and 6.50, depending on if I want to keep them the entire time. Oh. Yeah. Cool. So I think the last two times I've stopped in just for a minute, just to see if uh, there were any questions. And, and you, know, you got the practice midterm you can work on. That's not bad to, to get ready. Okay, so that's good. So I'll send that out. If somebody's emailing me now, uh, I will make the uh, Zoom meeting and I have it set up so you can join without me needing to be there, right? So anybody in the class can go and it's just to help each other out. And you guys, you got the practice midterm, like I said. Okay, any questions about that? Yes. Professor, I have a question. Yes. Um, so I'm looking at the 6.1 um, homework problems and you said, um every third one so after 33 after 30 it'll be 33 36 and so on until 63 yes okay. is that the only place i do that i can't remember yeah uh all right here we go oh yeah that is the only place yeah, I usually, if you've taken any of the classes with me, I, I do that a lot. But the way this book is set up, that's the only place it is. So yeah, be careful. It's not after 30. 12 through 30 every third one. So 12, 15, 18, 21, up to 30. Oh, okay. And then you go to 63. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So be careful. Don't do a ton more than you have to. Yeah. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, guys. So... If there's nothing else, I want to do a quick review with you, and then I'm going to unleash you on this um, worksheet. I forget simple words sometimes. It's always good. Let's see. So last time we got into this uh, chapter six, the Z scores, right? So again, just to remind you guys, let me show you where this is. Oh, shisa. Shisa. Let me become a student, go to modules, go to unit six, Z-scores. So let's remember how to use this crazy ass thing. All right, can everybody access your own set of charts? If you haven't printed this out, if you had a printer, that's great. You should just print this thing out. If you don't have a printer, I can relate my printer has decided it's done. My printer said, I'm done. So I'm like, all right. Anyway, sorry. Um, so let me know if you're not able to access this. 
uh, let's do a couple of questions real quick together. Um, oh, that's right. I got to do a little more complicated than what we did last time. Um, let's do a simple one and then we'll do a more complicated one. Shaisa. All right, here we go. Go right to here. Yeah. All right. So can somebody help me out? Can you draw for me what this would look like? The probability that Z is uh, greater than negative 1.74. And this, I'm sorry, I have to tell you this. I have a normal distribution. Right, this chart only works if it's a normal distribution. It's gotta be bell-shaped. Waha! Okay. What goes right in the middle when I'm talking about z-scores? Zero. Zero, I love it. So the mean always becomes zero if I'm talking about z-scores. Like, otherwise, the mean goes here, of course, but you know, for z-scores, the mean is zero. Where's negative 1.74? To the left. To the left. And then which way do I shade? I want the probability that z is greater than 1.74. So which way do I shade? The right. Isn't that crazy? So the little it's a little arrow that points you in the direction. So you shade this way. Now, when I look up negative 1.74 in the chart, first off, what, what do you guys get when you look up negative 1.74? Somebody's got the answer, or, or at least what that is, right? Negative 1.74. Yeah, it looks like 0409. Is that cool? Do you guys see how to read this? Here's the first decimal place, and then you go across to the second decimal place. Negative 1.7, four, 0409. Where is that in the picture? Where's 0409? What does this chart always tell you? Areas that are where? Yeah, the chart, now listen, I love you guys. The chart will tell you the area that is below the z-score you just looked up. That's all it does. This chart is very single-minded. It gives me the area below the z-score that I just looked up. Okay. So where am I gonna, so on this picture then, ah, oh crap. Where am I gonna put 0.0409? To the right, to the left. To the left, it's gotta be below what it, and why does that make sense? Would it make sense to say that this side is 4% or this side is 4%? Which one makes more sense? The smaller side. Yeah, the smaller side should be 4%. Now, have I answered the question yet? Have I found the correct area yet? Didn't I shade in the area I want? Have I found that yet? No. Nope. Can I subtract it from one? Exactly. I want to get the other part. So I got to do one minus that. All right, this is bugging me. I got to write 0409 better. That's so pretty. So I got to do one minus that to get the other side. So now listen, I really want, now, how did we find areas when it had a uniform distribution? If it was a uniform distribution, how did we find the areas? Didn't we just draw it and then figure out the area? Right? We did areas length times height or width time or whatever you want to call these things. Are you with me? Is, didn't we just do that? Why can't I do that with a normal curve? Because who the hell knows the formula for the area of this crazy thing. I mean, do you have a formula for the area of curvy sided triangle? 
or or this what the sh what the hell is this do you notice how i decided hell was better than shit to say there i don't know okay. do you guys i really want you to understand looking at the chart looking at the chart is equivalent to doing this formula they both accomplish the same thing they find the area a very specific area I really want you guys to be with me on this. It's just that the shapes that we make, when we make little areas of this, those shapes we do not know. There's no geometric formula for their area. We need some freaking help. And that's what the chart is all about. The chart is a bunch of answers. We just have to know the right place to look to get them, right? So what do you guys get for this? I'm sorry. 9591. 9591, I love it. And if you look up, just to remind you guys, this is not necessary. What I'm about to say is unnecessary. But if you look up positive 174, what do you get? The answer. The answer, I love it. Why does that work? Because of symmetry. The area above negative 174 is equal to the area below positive 1.74. If you don't understand that, it's fine. It's just a tiny shortcut. It saves you like three seconds. So who gives a shit? But in case you understand it, have fun with it. Use it. Can we do one more? Sure. All right, let me see. I need to make some room or something here. Yeah, let me erase this crap here. Get away. Go away, old stuff. All right, let's try this positive side. By the way, I, I'm only, all right, let me, let me do this. Let's do this. This is going to require positive and negative side. Let's do that. I haven't done that yet. Doesn't matter. What's the probability that the Z score is between negative 1.3 and uh, 0.98? I like it. Yummy, yummy. Can you draw that first? So it's still part of the same problem. It's still, I know it's a normal curve. Some things I do okay with, all right. So there's zero again, because it's talking about a z-score. So I know zero is in the middle. Negative 1.3 is about right there, and 0.98 is about right there. So I want this area here. Is that all right, that picture, you guys with me? So the area between negative 1.3 and 0.98. Is that an area the chart understands at all? Does that, does the chart understand that area at all? Is that a, is that a weird question? What kind of area does the chart understand? Areas below a z-score. What happened to positive? I don't know what that means. Uh, so this area is an area the chart has no idea about. It doesn't understand this area at all. So how do I do this? Well, if I look up 0.98, what area do you guys get? If you look up 0.98, let me say it like that. What do you get when you look up 0.98? Point nine eight. Point eight three six five. Yeah, 0.8365. Where is that on the picture I made? Where's that area? To the right of 0.98? Yes, always. No, careful not to the right. To the left. Whenever you look, whatever I really know, listen, 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 listen. The chart tells you the area below the z-score you looked at. Whatever z-score you look up, what's the chart tell you? The area below that z-score. That's all it does. So I, if I look up 0.98 and I get 0.8365, then the area is below 0.98 all the way. So is that too much or too little? Is that too big of an answer or too small of an answer for my question? Too big. Too big. Damn it. That area, too damn big. So 
exactly how much area do I need to cut off? Because this includes everything all the way. I want to cut off exactly this area. Wouldn't that leave me with the area in the middle? So if I knew how much this area here was, then I could just cut it off. I could just subtract it. Well, how do I get that area? Look it up. Look it up. Well, what the shit? So what do you get okay. when you look up? Sorry. 0 0.0968. It's not as easy as that, Anthony. You got to be careful. So let me go up to my, uh, where's my negative? Is that up here? Yeah. All right, where are you? Negative 1.3. Let me see if I can line this bad boy up. That'd be nice. I probably can't, can I? It's off the picture. Oh, yeah, I can't. See if I could be. There we go. Negative 1.30, right? There's no second decimal place. So negative 1.30, right there. Right, that would be negative 1.30. So 0 0.0968. So that is the area there. So how do I find the area here? You subtract the two. Subtract the two. So whenever you have the area between two scores, you find the area below each of them and then subtract. That physically makes sense. It'll give you the part in the middle. So this will be 0.8365 minus 0.0968. And that is, of course, whatever the hell it is. I think it's point. It's 7397. Thank you. You saved me for myself. Okay. Can we do just a positive one? Uh, sure. Uh, okay, it'll, it'll work the same way. And then I got one more type I want to do. So let's see. Here, you guys do this one. Find the probability that Z is less than So see, when you draw the picture, can somebody tell me? You should know the answer. Is it going to be kind of relatively big answer or relatively small answer? Small. If I said greater than 3.02, then it should be a relatively small answer because do you see how tiny that area is? How? What about this area? Isn't that almost the whole picture? So it's definitely a relatively big area. Do you guys understand that? That's what the picture does for me. I know the answer is definitely more than 50%. There's no, no question it's more than half because half would be right there at zero. It's way up here, so it should be on the big side. So I already got one person tell me what they got. Did you guys get the same thing? Gotta be careful, it's not 3.2, it's 3.02, right? Don't look at 3.2, look at 3.02. Yeah, so 9987. Is so that you the answer? Have to subtract one from it. Yeah, why not? Okay, Did we find? Well, no, 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 no. Be careful. I, I really want you guys to get this. 
Watch this. Look at the first question again. If the question would have been less than, then I would have stopped right there. So when do I have to do one minus? When the area I found in the chart is not the area that the problem asked for. The problem asks for the area below 302 and the chart tells me the area below 302. I don't have to do anything else. There's no adjustment I have to make. So if Z was greater than 3.02, ah, it would be so, one minus. So if I said probably Z greater than 3.02, that would have been the area up here, this little tiny thing. That would have been one minus 0.9987. Yes, good, right? So the chart tells me areas below the z-score I look up. If the question isn't that, if it's greater than or between two z-scores, oh shit, I got some more work to do. But the question is area less than something, that's exactly what the chart tells me. I just got to look it up and I'm done. So notice a couple of things about how I draw these pictures. I put areas up here. That's to keep me straight. Z scores are down here. Areas are up here because they can look like each other. It's so evil. All right. Let's try one more type of problem and then I'm going to unleash you on the worksheet. I'm going to erase all this. You guys ready? I'm going to erase all my beautiful stuff. He's going to, he's sad. I'm going to erase you. He's all sad. Oh, don't erase me. My too bad little job of the hut. You're gone. All right. That's what we need. We need like a baby Java to go with baby Yoda. All right. Sorry. I'm thinking out loud. So what about this weird ass question? Um, so given a standard, all it means when they say standard, good Lord, Jeff, what? All right, let me try again. <laughs> Wait a minute. I know I can do this. Given, I think it's because this has got to be all weird. A standard normal curve. All it means is it's normal and there's Z scores. Find Oh shit, Jeff. That's the word find, everybody. Find P uh, 67. I like it. Oh shit. What is uh, capital P 67? What the hell does that mean? What is that? 67th percentile. Good. 67th percentile. Can somebody tell me about where should that be? I'll put zero right there. There's the middle. Where should P67 be? What percentile is zero? 50. That's the 50th percentile. So the 67th percentile should have more below it than the mean does. So where is it going to be on the left side or the right side of the mean? The right, the right side. The right side. It's got to be, so this has 50% below it. So of course it's got to go up a little bit so it gets the extra little percent. So there's where about where it would be. So this is 0.67. Is 0.67 a Z-score? That'd be 3.50 and up. What's happening? On the uh, C score? No, definitely not. No, 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 no. Yeah, is 0.67 a Z score? A uh, 0.67, yes. I love you guys. What is it? It's a percentage, right? It's an area. That's why I put it up here. This problem we're doing right now is like the reverse of the problems we did earlier. My answer on the problems we did earlier was always a percentage, right? At the end, a probability, a percentage. This one starts with a percentage and I wanna figure out what the Z-score is that has that. It's kind of like if I say 67th percentile, I wanna figure out what score gets me there. 
how the hell am I going to do this shit? Well, normally I have a Z-score and I look up the area, right? If I have a Z-score like 1.22, that would be it right there. Lucky number 888. The 0 0.04. 0 0.04. No. Sorry, I mean 0 0.4. Ah, there we go. Now we got somebody going. So can you find the area of 0.67? Somebody already did. In fact, I didn't realize I picked one that was so on the nose. Where's 0.67 area? Where is it? It's going to be right here. Do you see it? Normally, <laughs> I didn't even do this on purpose. Normally, you just get to the one that's closest. But this one's perfect. So what z-score is that associated with? 0.4. Four, I like it. So this Z score would be 0.44. I don't know why I'm putting it in parentheses over. So a Z score of 0.44 would have 67% below it, which is what a percentile means, right? The percentage below. So again, I really want this, this chart is what I look at instead of setting up an area for a rectangle like we do with uniform curves because pieces of a normal curve don't make nice geometrical shapes. Let me look at this side. What the hell shape is that? Do you know the area of melted rectangle? No, we don't. So that's what this is here for. It's like, okay, I got you. Don't set up a formula. Just look at me, right? All right, so here's what I need you to do now. Wait, before yes. we so for you looked at point six seven, right? You yep. start zero point six and you go over to seven. Hold on. No, 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 no. You gotta really understand it. That is Dude. not a Z score. Okay. I'm trying to find the Z score. This is a percentage, isn't it? Percentile is a percentage. Yes. Where a percentage is in the chart in here. So we've got 0.67 right there. Oh, Normally you get as close as you can. And then you look out to see what that score is. Okay. So really what's, what I'm asking here is what Z score would you have to get on a test? What would have to be your Z score so that you have, you're in the 67th percentile if the tests are normally distributed? Okay. A lot of ifs there, but oh well. All right. Maybe, 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 maybe. So now I need you, what's going on here? There we go. Uh, go back to modules, go back to chapter six. There is a worksheet, normal distribution practice. So I want you guys, hello, Aw, service unavailable. Hopefully my Wi-Fi is okay. There we go. So I need you just to start working on the sheet. Holy sheet. I think I discussed, well, we'll see. What's different with number two? Are they Z-scores in number two? Aren't they minutes in number two? So you're, for number two, you're going to need this formula. You have to convert the z-score, I'm sorry, the raw scores to z-scores, right? Does somebody remember what does a z-score tell you? The data point? No, this question could be on the midterm and every single graded thing from here on to the end of the semester. This question. The right amount now. of standard deviations away from the mean. The number, yes, the, the number of standard deviations from the mean to the data point, however you want to say that. So z-score is the number of standard deviations from the mean to the data point. That's what a z-score tells you. It doesn't tell you anything else. That's what it tells you.
All right, so go get this chart. And I mean, this worksheet and start working on it. All right. Hopefully everybody's able to access that thing. Let me know if you need some help. A little bit. All right. So again, <laughs> thank you for that. Everybody needs to help me out with that. Um, when you have a problem that does not give you z-scores, the mean goes in the middle. It would become zero as a z-score. I have to convert the data point I'm interested in to a z-score. And the minute I do that, what did you guys get for this? Anybody did this yet? 23.29. Ruh, ruh. Yeah. What you have done is you did not put parentheses for your poor calculator so it knows what the top is. Oh, yeah, no. I got negative 0.7578. Yeah, so how much do you think we're going to round that to? How far does the chart go for z-scores? Four places. No, that's probabilities. Z-scores, oh. it only goes. Look at me. Three. Two places. Doesn't it go two places for the z-scores, guys? Let me show you again. So this becomes, I'm really upset at myself because I did this the wrong way, but oh well. This becomes negative 0.76. So this question, the probability that x is less than 27.2 becomes the probability that Z is less than negative 0.76. I convert this into a Z score. So now I can look this up on the chart, correct? So I converted that into a Z score and then I can look it up on the chart. Let me see a lot of people chatting at me, hold on. Oh, they're all chatting the answer to me, thank you. What really sucks about the way I did this so if you look at the chart, the z-score chart, I have no idea what you guys can see right now. Negative 0.76, if you look up negative 0.76, what do you guys get? I think somebody's already said it in the chat. Yes, but do you guys agree? Do you concur? Is everybody okay out there? If I look up negative 0.76 in the, in the chart, let me, well, unfortunately, if I do this, oh, well, screw it, I'll do it. All my stuff is gone now, but that's okay. So if I look up negative 0.76, negative 0.76, that's the answer. 22.36% chance of that happening, whatever it was. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and put you into groups. You guys check out your number one and you help each other with number two. Please do something. I'm going to kind of stop into a few rooms and, and see if I need to be sad that nobody's doing anything. We'll find out. Um, let me stop. All right. Let's take a look here. Okay. Hopefully these first three are very simple, right? That's my hope. Um, so when you look up 1.18, so if I wanna put it in the right place, it'd be about right there. I want this area. That's beautiful. I don't have to do anything except look it up. That's exactly what the chart loves. It loves in those areas below, right? So if I look up 1.18, what do you guys get? Point eight eight one zero. Eight eight one zero. I love it. Is that all right? Does everyone understand why I that's the answer? That's it. Because the question was area below and the chart gives me areas below. So of course there's nothing to modify. This one's gonna be different. Stupid problem. It wants the area above negative 0.52. So when I find this, oh, Jeff, don't you do that. When I find the area below by looking in the chart, 
that's not going to be my answer because I need this part. So always shade where the problem is asking. So when I look at negative 0.52, I know I'm not done. All right. But when you look up negative 0.52, what did you guys get? Oops. 0.3015. Beautiful. 0.3015. So then the answer is going to be one minus that. Point 0.985. Again, if you like the shortcut, you could just look up positive 0.52 and get the answer. Okay, so part C is the one that's got the most work because it's got two freaking Z scores. So there's 1.49, there's negative 2.63, and then what's the area between? Never ever subtract Z scores because Z scores tell me where I am. Only ever subtract areas. That's what makes physical sense, right? So when you look up 1.49, what do you get? 0.9319. And we look up negative 263. What do you get? 0 0.0043. 0 0.0043. How's everybody doing out there? Is this, is this okay? All right. And then when you subtract those two things, what do you get? Do you get this? Yes. Thank God. Okay. Oh, well, let me see. Let me do this. There we go. It's all about me. Bam. All right. Uh, part D. I can't remember now if we even did that. We might. Well, anyway. P38. The mean is always P50. Cuts it in half. So P38 must be further down. So it has a smaller tail does that make sense if i call this a tail it looks like a tail doesn't it so this will be 0.38 so you have to find the closest to 0.38 as you can and am i looking on the negative or the positive z scores negative negative because i'm below zero i like it so 0.38 the closest i can get to 0.38 it's 0.3783. And what z-score is that? Negative um, 0 0.31. 0.31. So that's the answer. How are you guys out there? Is that is that all right? Here, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask this dumb question again. Can you guys see the z-score chart right now, or can you still see the worksheet? We can see it. The z-score chart. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, so right there, that's my two options for close to 38. People just go here normally, but that's closer. I would also accept negative 0.305 because that's right in between those two. Yes. If you want to do that, if you don't want to do that, you just give me the one that's closest. I like it. Now, by the way, before I forget, if you've taken statistics before and your last instructor lets you use the calculator to find Z scores in areas, well, that's too damn bad. You don't have them anymore. You have me. <laughs> so you must use the chart. I don't care that the calculator would be more precise. I don't care. This is all about learning stuff, right? All right, so I'm sorry if that came off a little, but too bad. I, I get people that are really, hey, let me use it. I don't care, I don't care. All right, let me stop doing that. Um, what about this one is exactly the same problem as D, but it doesn't sound like it at first. So where, where would there be a Z-score that has 10% above it? Ain't no way in hell it's down here, right? That's got more than half above it, right? So it's got to be somewhere way up here. So it has only 10% above it. 
would the chart understand the area? What's the only area the chart understands? Area that is? On the left. Below, I love it, to the left. Below is East Square. So what's the area below that? If that's 10%, this has to be? 90. 90%, I love it. So this becomes, I could just, instead of saying all this shit, I could have said the Z-score for P90. It would have been exactly the same problem. I just wanted to make it sound different. So if you look up 0 0.90, what's the closer you get to 0 0.90? This one's pretty nice. I see 0 0.9015, is that good? Am I all alone? I said 0.128 because it's closer. Good. So closer than this is 8997, right? That's only three away. That's really close. So it should be like somebody said in chat, 1.28. Kick ass. All right. Now, I claim that all the problems in number two are exactly the same as the problems in number one. They're the same exact idea. It just has one extra step at the start, right? I have to make Z scores. So in the middle, I already did this problem, right? 33.74, this is 27.2. We already made the Z score. Didn't we already do this problem? Why did I erase it? That was smart, Jeff. Oh yeah, I erased it because I had to. That makes sense now. So you make a Z score out of this. Uh, what was the, yeah, 8.63, what was the z-score we got? You guys remember? Negative 0.76. My poor battery. Negative 0.76? It's all right. And then wanted less than, so all I have to do is look that up and I'm done, right? And if you look that up, you got negative 0.76. 2236. 2236, kick ass, okay. Which means a little over 22% of students would take less than 27 minutes a week finding a parking spot. Back in the day, we actually parked on campus, right? All right, so now again, the probability that it's more than 53, put the mean in the middle. Am I recording by the way? Yes. Uh, then put 53 down and I want more than 53. So I got to make 53 into a Z-score. I can make this one into a Z-score easy. What do you get when you make 53 into a Z-score? 2.23. 2.23, that's what that becomes. And then we run that up to 2.2, right? Say again, sorry. You ran that up to 2.2? Why? Because we can only have two numbers two for Z scores? Two decimal places, not two numbers, oh, two, two decimal places. So decimal two places? Points. Yeah, because can't you find 2.23? Yes. Yes, so you round all Z scores to two decimal places just because the chart only goes to two places. So 2.23, it looks like, what'd you guys get? 0.9868. No. 0.9871. 9871. Yeah. You got to be careful. Don't say one, two, three, because the first column is zero, right? 2.20, 2.21. I understand. It's a very easy mistake to make. Trust me. I understand. Uh, and I've already forgotten what we just said. <laughs> Good job, Jeff. Uh, 9871. Thank you so much. All right. 9871. And so what's the area for the answer? That's not the answer, right? No. All right. Thanks, everybody. So, so, so point oh one two nine, right? If you do one minus this, is everybody with me? You guys doing okay out there? This is all about the area that matches with the question. 
Same thing we did with uniform. Oh, okay. It's just that I don't have a formula to use like I did with uniform for rectangle areas. I don't have a formula for this stuff, so I have to use the chart. Somebody else made the chart for us. Thank you very much. I like it. And remind me again, what's the only time I could use the chart? What's the only time I could use this chart? Anybody? Normal What's, distribution? Yes. When is sorry? <laughs> when is the normal distribution? So uh, I want you to realize this chart has all the answers to any probability question. Just sitting here waiting for us. But before I can use it, I have to know that I'm using that I have a normal distribution. So a lot of statistics is how do I tell if it's normal enough? Like if it's close enough to a normal curve to use the chart, does that make sense? Quite a few problems going forward is going to be, how do you know you're working with a normal curve? Well, there's going to be several situations. There's going to be things we have to check. And we do that because we can't use the, the, the chart that's got all the answers on it unless it's a normal curve. So of course I want to see, is it a normal curve? Yes. Great. I can use the chart with all the answers. I mean, that's awesome. Uh, and then this guy, two, part three is really just like one C. They're the same problem. So I'm going to take a minute. If I just change both of these into Z scores, right? So let me put them in the chart. So the middle is 33.74. What time is it, by the way? I don't want to keep us forever. Yeah, it's getting kind of late. 15.5 uh, and 29.5. And I want to find this area. So if I can find the Z scores, I can then look up the areas and then I could subtract them, right? That's the idea. So what Z-score <clears throat> do you get for 15.5? Negative 2.11. All right, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna crowdsource these. So let me know if these are wrong. What Z-score do you get for 29.5? Negative 0.49. Negative 0.49? Yeah. All right, nobody is objecting. I do have one question for that part. Sure. Uh, does it matter if we ran that one up to 0 0.5? Mm. Let's see. All right. So I will now put this in the calculator and see what I think. Oops, crap. Oh, yeah. Divided by 8.63. Oh, well, it's 491, right? So you wouldn't round it to 5 because it's a 1. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. If it was 495, then you would round up to 0.5, right? Negative 0.5. Okay. So if I look up negative 0.49, I get 3121. Is that what you guys got? 3121? Yes. And if I look up negative 211, what do you get? 0 0.0174. 0 0.0174. And then I just got to subtract those. So I can get the area in between. So what do you get when you subtract those? Is it two nine four seven? Two nine four seven. Yay, Jeff! Doing math in my head. All right. Last one, real quick. All right. Oh, there's a lot to cram in. Uh, yeah, that's fine. We're going to have a day where we actually go to the time we're supposed to. I know it's terrible. I know it's terrible. Um, this one, I'll, I need to end up with a time, which is X, right? And they're starting me off with a percentage. And the 14th percentile is down here, of course. So if I can figure out, so here's the idea. Let me see if you guys are cool with this. These problems up here, so a normal z-score problem, sorry, the, the normal word is not a pun, sorry. Normal z-score problem, you would have a raw score, you would change it into a z-score and you would look up the percentage. Do you guys agree with me? Didn't we change an x into a z? And then we looked the z-score up and got the percentage. 
So this is the regular process. This problem gave me the percentage and I've got to find a time, which is the X. So I got to do all this in reverse. I got to do all this backwards. So first off, did anyone find the Z-score for the 14th percentile? So what's the closest to 0.14? There's one that's really nice and close. Negative 1.08. Yeah, negative 1.08. Kick ass. Now watch. Oh, crappity doo Jeff, if I could just write. I feel like I should be like Pinocchio. Instead of being a real boy, I just want to, if I could just write. Okay, negative 1.08. I like to put Z scores in parentheses because I'm weird. Now watch, I have this formula real quick. I have this formula for changing X's to Z's. I could throw all this shit in. I know the Z score. I know the, the mean. I know the standard deviation, right? And then I could solve for X. But can't I solve for X before I throw anything in? Right? How would you solve this formula for X? What would you have to do first? Uh-oh, the return of algebra. What would I have to do first? Okay. Deviation instead of divide. There you go. Like Corbin's like, just get X by itself, dude. No, what do I do first? Get X by itself. All right. I have to multiply by sigma. Doesn't that make sense? Kill it. I don't like fractions. Get out of there. Die fraction. So now I got Z sigma equals X minus mu. What do I have to do? Last thing to get X by itself. Subtract mu. Or mu. Why would I subtract it? That's not gonna add. do Yes, I gotta undo it. Gotta add so it cancels out here. Let me put it in front. So I get X equals mu plus Z sigma. So now I can plug in Everything I know, the mean is 33.74, right? Plus, well, then it's negative 1.08, that's fine. Times, what was the standard deviation? 8.63, yes. Right, I know this, I know we figured out this, right? Negative 1.08. And we know the standard deviation, 8.63. So just gotta plug it all in. What I love about that formula yeah, let me make some room. I can get rid of this thing. I really want you guys to get this. I almost don't care where the answer is anymore, to be honest. Here's what's really interesting. Oh, don't do that, Jeff. Stay with me, stay with me. Remember I told you, there's, I already told you one question that's gonna be on the test, didn't I? I'm gonna ask you, what does the Z-score tell you? Let me write this bigger. Some of you guys are having some trouble seeing this thing. Get out of here. You mess up with my kids, stop it. Go away. All right. So X equals mu plus Z sigma. By the way, I'm going to have all the formulas on the midterm, so don't freak out. Watch what this says. Can I read this in English? Yes. You ready? If I start at the mean and I go this many standard deviations, I end up at the data point. So what does the Z-score tell you? It tells you the number of standard deviations from the mean to the data point. What? So you've heard crazy, silly people say math is a foreign language. It is true. It's not just a dumb thing. It, it is a foreign language. It is. And you can translate math equations just like you can translate English sentences. I have no idea how much you got. Well, on, on the one hand, this is just another formula, right? It's just another formula, but it actually is the definition of z-score. Z-score is how many of these from the mean to the data point. So the z-score is the number of standard deviations from the mean to the data point. Bam. All right. Did anyone do this? I guess we should get an answer. What'd you guys get for this? 24 point something. Nobody did that. 
24.12. Sure. I, don't, I, I actually don't care. Right. I don't know if you guys understand why I don't care. Because what does it say in front of the equals three three? Because it's too low on the screen. I can't. Oh, I'm sorry. It, it just has this formula. So it says that formula, that's that formula is right there. And then it equals, so I put the mean in. So let me put it up here. All I did was I wrote the formula and then I threw stuff in. So X equals the mean plus, it really should be minus, but it's okay. Negative 1.08 times 8.63, that's all I did. So the formula, and then I plug stuff into the formula. All right, guys, I think that's enough for today. So Wednesday is devoted to the midterm. Uh -oh. I don't know, somewhere between 20 and 25. Counting A, B, C, D, E, F, G, whatever, right? Uh, so come ready during office hours or the first so many minutes of class will be devoted to questions and then the rest of the time it's going to be for the midterm and everybody's camera must be on so I can just stare at you the entire time and make sure we're all above boards with everything. Okay. Should be exciting. All right. So let me know if you need to hang out. Otherwise, you are free to go. <laughs> Very exciting. That's right. You're welcome. Anytime. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Well, thank you. You're, you're welcome. Professor? Yes. Oh, I, today I was late because I noticed like one hour is the um, oh, American the clock time. Table. The clock yeah. Table. Okay. Yeah, I out, I keep, I, normally during the semester, I would send out a message. I just forgot to, but I'm sorry. Things happen. Now you're now you'll be ready for your other classes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I will catch up, like okay, good. watching YouTube. Good. All right. I'll Thank post you. it right now. Thank Everybody you. else okay? Okay, you're welcome. All right, I'm out of here. <laughs>